Hello everybody and welcome to my karma guide to the mid lane. I just want to go over a few things before we jump right into the guide. Uh, first up, we've got timestamps in the description below if you just want to skip around and don't want to listen to certain parts. Uh, totally understand. Uh, just uh, feel free to use and abuse those and uh, this is actually a part two guide so if you want to go back and look at my uh, part one guide I'm actually going to put a link to it in the description as well that uh, it just goes over like your base kit, some items that are pretty good on or some runes that you should be taking and just some really basic stuff uh, and I wanted to uh, just thank you guys so much uh, it's been really cool talking to all the subs and uh, going over all the different uh, suggestions you guys have been giving me it's been really cool trying some weird like off meta stuff uh, <laughs> so that has been uh, quite a blast and I have definitely had mixed uh, success with some of those suggestions like uh, Electrocute Vagar was actually uh, pretty good. Uh, someone suggested that to me. That was pretty cool. But uh, some GLP build. I I've yet to make uh, a GLP build actually work. So <laughs> don't don't uh, don't suggest that in the comments because I I don't know why, but I'm just terrible with the the GLP. Um, and I also want to offer something special to my subs, as it's been uh, really cool talking to you guys, and you've been giving me a bunch of suggestions. So I actually want to offer, uh, if anyone wants to link their NAOPGG or maybe like a, a full gameplay to something on YouTube, uh, I can definitely give you uh, maybe some tips of what you're doing wrong and how you might be able to approve, improve. Um, and as it kind of goes in with uh, my profession, what I want to do, I want to become a teacher and a coach. So uh, I love doing this kind of stuff. Uh, don't feel, I mean, feel free, even if there's like three or four people that I haven't reviewed yet, I definitely will get around to it as I like uh, helping people out because I've actually been stuck in each of, <laughs> I've been stuck in bronze, I've been stuck in silver, I've been stuck in gold, I've been stuck in platinum, and, I've been, <laughs> and I'm now I'm stuck in diamond four, so. It won't be the highest level analysis. It's not gonna be like LCS level analysis helping you out, but I, I, I definitely will try my best and I, I'll be able to get you out of those lower elos. Uh, so just hit me up with uh, those uh, comments and I will get right on that. And let's jump right into my guide. All right, and getting into Karma's laning phase. First up, her gank assist. Now, Karma has a great amount of gank assist with the Q slow, with the W root, and with the E speed up to help your jungler close a bit of distance. So always uh, let the opponent push uh, you in a bit for that early level three gank right after uh, your jungle jungler has obtained uh, the red buff and has a lot more gank pressure. And uh, just let them know, hey, I have a great root. I have a, I have a good amount of CC and I can speed you up. It's going to be a, a really, it can be a really good way to get the karma into an even better spot in the early and mid game where she already does very well. All right, and next up is uh, roaming, which is a pretty important part of karma's kit if you are pushing the opponent laner in with your uh, Q spam or if you're going the minion dematerializer, it helps a bit. Uh, with that roaming style, just kind of getting out of uh, killing those minions quickly and getting you out of that uh, laning phase. And uh, she also has a, a decent kit for uh, roaming and for dueling that uh, you really should take advantage of how strong Karma is in the early game and what she's able to provide in the 1v1s and the 2v2s. So uh, always look if you're against something with a terrible wave clear and just something like a cast in that you can just push in. Um, just always look to uh, roam to that bot lane to help that ADC get ahead because you're going to be able to help him and supplement him uh, a lot better in the late game too if he's ahead. So always look for those roams uh, uh, mid and uh, top. Another thing with uh, roaming, Karma is very good with uh, poking people out and with sieging. So really uh, it, roaming to lanes with very low amounts of uh, wave clear can be very effective to help your allies push down enemies and siege towers uh, because karma is so strong in that early game and she has a really long range with her mantra Q zoning people out from their farm denying people farm is also a really good thing in that early game and it, it should really you should really be taking advantage of your your karma because it, it's just such, you're at such a strong point you just need to have as much effect on the map as possible and uh, when your minions are already pushed into the tower, there's very little you can do unless it's just something you're trying to, you're just trying to poke out the mid laner. If your other lanes are doing fine, I guess you can do that. All right, and uh, next up is uh, the strength and weaknesses with Karma's laning. Now, uh, my personal 
the reason why I like taking Karma into the mid lane, uh, her particular strengths are her Q, her W, and her E are all very strong in trades. You just use your E when you know they're trying to uh, throw their abilities at you in burst, and that's going to kind of stunt the amount of damage they're going to be able to do to you. You're going to be able to sustain through damage with your W. If you mantra W, which I usually do in all in trades, just to kind of keep my health bar at a higher uh, point than my enemies and your Q has a decent amount of damage on it. So you should be winning most early, almost all early game trades, except against very specific champions that are also strong in that early game. Um, some weaknesses with Karma is uh, she can get bursted out uh, against the really uh, strong burst champions like Fizz and Zed. If you're not taking any uh, defensive items or uh, resolve secondary, you have to be very careful uh, with Karma. Um, she isn't the best roaming uh, mid laner. She isn't a TF. She isn't a, a Talia. She isn't a Galio. So um, she doesn't have the best uh, roaming, but you can make up for that by constantly pushing in your opponent with uh, those Qs because it's a low cooldown, high damage, good amount of damage against the, the minions and uh, champions alike. All right, and uh, kill pressure with Karma. I I'd say Karma has a medium range of uh, kill pressure on your opponents. If you're able to bait them in with low HP and just Mantra w -ing, uh and uh, you do have a decent amount of uh, early game damage, especially if you're going those early loot in builds where you get a good amount of AP, um, you can really look for those, uh, uh, those all-ins where you're going for the kills. So just know that you got to look at it like, hey, I'm really strong right now. This is the early game. This is the mid game. This is where karma shines. Let's let's try and get a kill. Let's try and get this snowball going. The last thing you want to do is to be defensive and just looking for max range Q poke in those early game landing phase just because this is your time to shine, man. Just, just look at it like that. This is karma's time to shine. All right, and let's go over some of Karma's power spikes. First up, her level one is a extremely strong level one just because you have access to that alt at level one and uh, your mantra Q does a massive amount of damage so always look for those trades especially if it's a squishy and uh, it has a very large hitbox so I recommend you you try and get try to get used to that Q hitbox because it can kind of it, it can be a mi bit misleading sometimes just with how far uh, it actually hits people so just I, I'd recommend just spamming those mantra cues with a, a test dummy and see the exact range in those uh in that practice tool that uh Rai provides uh next power spike i think for karma is her level three this just makes for an amazing all-in trade with what you're trying to do with karma is super strong in the early game and then you're able to shield off a lot of uh your opponent's damage when you're at level three because you have your shield then you're able to heal the rest of their damage off with your Mantra W, and then you're able to poke them out with your Q. Very few champions can actually out-trade you at level 3, so when you hit level 3, if you're at a similar HP mark to your opponent, always look for that trade because you are, you have just have so many defensives and you have a good amount of damage that you really should be looking for that all-in at level 3. Alright, next power spike we can go over is uh, Spell Pen. Now, when... <laughs> When you get uh, Oblivion Orb and Sorcerer Boots and some kind of uh, damaging uh, item like Ludens, it is a very strong point for Karma. It can, your Mantra Qs can end up doing uh, like six or 700 damage to those Squishies, usually 70%, 60% of their health bar, and it really just stops them from doing any kind of team fighting. Uh, when you get these two items uh, of Spell Pen, you're... This is a great time to roam and affect the map. This is one of this is your strongest power uh, power spike in my opinion. If you're going uh, this build where you're just able to do so much, look to siege, look to to catch out the opponent uh, jungler. If you're able to push in your lane, just look to affect the map as much as possible. When you have these abilities, when you have these items, and when you're at this power spike, it is just really oppressive. All right, next power spike is I love going Ludens first item unless I'm just really, uh, really not doing well in lane if I get solo killed or something. But Ludens is just adds so much to Karma's early game. It just really, it it just supplements her uh, her power in the early game so much that uh, and it and makes those mantra cues. I think with only Ludens, uh, your mantra cue is doing around. I'd say around four or five hundred damage with the with the uh, proc off of Ludens. 
So uh, look to abuse that power spike. This is a great time also to roam. This is a great time to duel your opponent uh, in the laning phase. This is just a, a strong point for karma. So you, you really need to take advantage of this. You need to be looking at it as like a power play in a sport where you're just, this is a great time to just attack, attack, attack. All right, and the final power spike I want to go over, say, yeah, it's a bit later in the game. You went your loot in, so you went uh, your your spell pen, but then you started building into things like Athenes, things like Ardent Sensor, things like Zeke's Herald, or things like Shirelia. This is a, just a great point to look for those 5v5 team fights where you're able to supplement your ADC so well, you're able to have such a big impact with a, a little bit of damage mixed with a lot of utility. Um, this is when you just be like, hey guys, let's just group up as five. I'm Karma. I have these great items. Let's just let's just win some team fights, you know, because Karma it really excels in uh, that setting in the later game when you have those utility items, when you have a really good uh, hyper carry ADC. All right, and that will wrap up uh, Karma's power spikes. All right, and let's jump right into Karma's tips and tricks. First up, uh, team fighting. Now you should really be thinking about what you need to be doing in team fighting before it happens, just so you're you're prepared, you're ready to do it, you already know what you need to be doing, because uh, it really can change just by the 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 game state. If it's early game, if you're doing well, if you're snowballing, if you have good damage items, you should be throwing your mantra cues out and just zoning the squishies if you're able to weave them around uh, their front line. If the opponent has a lot of divers and they're focusing you, things like Talon, things like Yi, things like, uh, I don't know what else, Zed and Fizz, uh, you should probably be using saving your mantra for Mantra W just to be able to live and uh, provide uh, that much more utility for your team because you're not dead. <laughs> All right, and finally, uh, the, fi the third game state where you should be using your Mantra E is when uh, you are you have utility items you're you don't really have too much damage their frontliners are very good at absorbing your cues and not letting any get past to their squishies you should be uh doing their mantra e also another good game state uh to be using the mantra e is if you have a really kind of like a scary death ball that just runs at you like something like olaf uh trundle uh maokai things that just really need movement speed to catch uh, the opponents or just trying to run people down that is a great uh, team fight. Uh, or if you have something like a Sivir 2, where it's just all built around move speed, it is a, a great time to be using that Mantra E. Just get that little bit more movement speed. Uh, I know there's a bit of diminishing return, but uh, a Mantra E is really good for those uh, those game states where you have uh, just a, lot, a bunch of bruisers just running at the enemy, just wanting to beat them over the head with clubs, you know? <laughs> all right, another uh, tip that is definitely really good in... Uh, Low elos if you're in plat or gold when you're playing against a very uh, aggressive player, whether it be an assassin or even uh, a mid-range mage. Karma is one of the best champions, in my opinion, for baiting tower dives just with the utility of the Mantra W and with the E. And even if you're running a defensive uh, summoner spell, always look and see if they're going to just they're going to disrespect uh, your healing and your sustain. And uh, just stay. Just try it a couple of times. Just be low hp under your tower and see if they dive you because you're able to root them under tower which is in the early game they're gonna die if they're rooted under tower and you're just poking them out with q and e so uh i really encourage you guys to give it a try because i get so many early game kills with just junglers trying to dive me and uh i'm just able to heal cc them and just kind of walk away laugh spam my uh, <laughs> emote at them and uh just have a bit of fun all right, another uh, tip with uh, Karma. She has an insanely flexible build path. This is one of uh, the best parts of Karma. It, it, it's so much more important on her because she can have so many effective different build paths that it really should just be built to your uh, game, uh, to the game state, right? If you're snowballing, if you're doing well, if you're just killing everything, if you're just really playing Karma to the top of her ability... You should be building damage. You should be going Ludens. You should be going into Sorcerer Boots, then Oblivion Orb, then Rabidons, and then I don't know, even Void Staff if you're just carrying that hard. Um, if you have a great ADC, you're not doing too well. Maybe just one kill, one death, and but your ADC is just popping the fuck off. You have Cutie Pie on your team. You should be building. You should be going probably one offensive item if you're doing okay, and then uh, just straight into utility, just supplementing and just being a force multiplier for your uh, ADC. 
Uh, another uh, kind of build path archetype that you can go into if you're just against a full AD team, just 4 AD or 3 AD and some uh, really minimal AP damage. Karma really does well with things like Frozen Heart and things like uh, Abyssal where you're just able to be a, a kind of a faux uh, frontliner and just able to absorb a bit of damage with your shields, with your heals, and with your defensive uh, ability, especially if you're going Resolve, Secondary Tree. Um, and then uh, kind of the third game state that you can kind of look at is just where your team needs straight you, like just say you're getting killed in lane you're getting really minimal cs i'd say just just build straight support just go first item zeke's or first item athenes then shirelia's then uh then art and sensor and that would be kind of the last uh, build path that i would recommend all right and uh the final tip uh, my favorite ability on Karma, the W. I know, I know I've talked about it a bit in uh, other parts of my guide, but the W, you should always be thinking about who you're going to be Wing in the team fight. If they have a, a diver that is really popping off, doing well, you should be saving your route for them always. If they have a tank that's just being super disruptive, if like a Sejuani or a Darius or a, uh, like a Ramus, W is just so good with just kind of taking them out of the the team fight for that uh that bit of time if your adc is really popping off you should just be saving your w for the first thing that pops on your adc just really be cognizant of your w i would say this is the most important skill to keep off of uh to keep on cooldown just because it has such a high impact in team fights and what it's able to do and how it's able to provide a lot of distance uh, for the squishies or if you're getting dove by uh, some divers with the heal it is a very important ability you should always know what you're going to be doing with that w it should be this shouldn't be like oh i just want a little bit more damage i'm going to throw the w on him and then not be able to get the second proc this is really one of the best defensive tools in my opinion in the game so right, uh, just final, be very cognizant of that and that one was matchups uh, i'm gonna highlight kind of four matchups that i really look out for in champion select if i'm not blind picking karma First up, my absolute two favorite matchups to take Karma into are Corky and Vel'Koz because they are long-range poke champions that are not the strongest in the early game. They uh, are very uh, susceptible to your uh, Mantra Q damage and you're able to shield off or Mantra W heal away a good source or, or amount of their damage in the all-ins. Um, you have a very good win rate as Karma in the mid lane going up against them uh, with a 56% win rate against Corky and a 55.96 against Vel'Koz. Uh, it is probably my the two favorite uh, lanes that I like abusing Karma into where you're just able to... Uh, this is like a basic uh, training pattern that I'd run into them that you guys should try out. It's just... Uh, run up to them when they're trying to last hit a CS. When they turn and throw your ability, their abilities at you, press your E, help you dodge a bit, help you absorb a bit of their damage, and then uh, throw on that Mantra W and uh, just be queuing it on cooldown, queuing them on cooldown, and uh, be weaving your auto attacks in. And uh, you should really be winning any of these trades against them, unless you're, I don't know, getting hit by the tectonic uh, rifts or whatever, uh, tectonic disruption of Vel'Koz into like his full combo. But that really shouldn't happen because you should be saving your uh, your shield uh, speed up against uh, Vel'Koz for that point of the uh, all-in. And really just able to sustain through their damage while throwing out your damage. And uh, they don't really have any recourse as far as uh, sustain outside of potions and maybe just really minuscule life steal out of the corky with uh, fleet footwork and uh, doran's blade so really look to abuse uh, karma into these matchups i encourage uh, if you see those in the mid lane just locking karma straight away and just dominate with karma because she is a, just a great pick into those two all right and now let's get into two matchups that i really really dislike taking karma into and i see them locked in against my karma i'm like gosh oh, shit first up is Echo, where he's able to do a good amount, a really good amount of burst damage. He's pretty strong at uh, almost all the points of the game. Uh, can really uh, negate a lot of what you're trying to do with your root and with your damage, where he's just able to uh, snap back after you use your cooldowns and after you, uh, you, if you're about to root him, he's able to snap back. If you use your Mantra Q and all your burst damage on him, he's just able to snap back and kind of uh, burst through uh, your shields and everything so echo it can be a pretty tough matchup uh, also a Nivea 
she is uh, pretty strong at most points of the game. Uh, definitely a bit outskills you in the late game and uh, can contend you in mid game after a few items. Uh, with really strong uh, base damage is coming out of that Anivia. And she's able to have an, such an immense amount of zone control against you uh, where she's able to throw the wall and then throw out the stun and she can really out trade you in those all ins because she has such a high amount of sustained damage with that alt and with the low cooldown on her e that um it is just a really tough matchup for karma uh you're you're both uh 44 win rate against echo and 46 percent win rate against anivia uh, if you guys have any tips against these two matchups i'd love to hear it just uh put it down in the comment section uh down below but uh these are two definitely ones where i'm playing if i'm playing against a really talented echo player a really talented anivia player can be a, a bit of a struggle i know a bit of the win rate against anivia is just her scaling and just how she's so strong in the meta but uh it, it, it is a tough matchup in lane i would say just she can just push you in uh at post level six if she just has a tier uh, where you're not able to really do too much against her. She just has such really good really good zone control. All right, and that will wrap up uh, the four highlighted matchups I had for you guys. All right, guys, and that will wrap up my uh, deeper look into Karma Guide. Uh, just want to go over a few things before uh, I check out. I've had this uh, longtime subscriber, Despairing Leonardo, who is a great Karma player and is always trying out really interesting stuff, and I just wanted to share a bit of uh, his insight with you guys. Uh, couple items he recommends is uh, first off that uh proto belt where he uh, says he, it, it can get you out of danger a bit it can help you uh proc that empowered uh mantra cube giving you a little bit more range uh, it can be a really strong early get mid game pickup uh, i've tried it before when i was snowballing and it, it was a blast uh i encourage you if you're kind of getting bored and you have a stagnant build path uh try out proto belt it could be a bit of fun help you land that uh the route as well um, he also recommends uh, Ludens, this is very good, I love Ludens. Uh, Ardent Sensor, which is really strong because it benefits you and uh, the people that you're shielding and you're able to uh, put that on everyone if you guys are close to each other with uh, the Mantra E. And also he sometimes goes uh, uh, Lich Bane, uh, he says to help uh, kill the ADC compensating for uh, the low uh, AP scalings and lack of damage uh, skills in the late game for uh, Karma. So if you're snowballing, if you auto, if you weave in your autos a lot, I definitely, <laughs> I recommend you give it a try. It, could, it seems like it'd be a bit of fun. I haven't personally tried this out yet, but uh, he definitely knows his Karma and uh, you should, uh, <laughs> you should try it out. All right, and as always, guys, if you have any feedback or critique uh, for my video, uh, definitely uh, comment down below. If you enjoyed the content, uh, please make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be putting out uh, quite a bit uh, more videos on uh, mostly mages and a few assassins uh, that I run. I'm going to be putting out some uh, just kind of uh, full gameplay where I just go through my thought process uh, in games and a little bit of higher elos and... Uh, just wanted to thank you guys again. It's been awesome talking to you in the, the comments section. And it, it, it's been a lot of fun. I can't believe I'm at like 160 or 150 subscribers. It's crazy. Uh, thanks for all the support. And as always, take it easy.